uh, uh, beyond just fact, but I, I still like it. Like, like a <laughs> like a mafia boss. I make him an offer he can't refuse. <laughs> him an offer he can't refuse. Oh, oh, lovely stuff. Well, uh, shall we get started then? Yeah, sure. Oh, oh wonderful. Yes. All oh, right. Okay, so uh, we've uh, we've just uh, finished discussing Cameron's uh, you know uh, uh, attempted theft of a of a football <laughs> football cap, uh, and uh, uh, we're now all here to do an episode of Talk of the Devil. So I am joined <laughs> by uh, yes, I am joined by uh, I'm going to ask Fred to introduce himself first. Okay, uh, hello. Uh, I'm, I'm Fred, um, yes. <laughs> Don't sound too enthusiastic. Uh, I'm all, this is my normal voice, John, how <laughs> dare you. Oh, okay, okay, and we're joined by Tristan as well, introduce yourself. Who, me? Oh, yes. I'm Tristan, hello. Howdy. Yes, nice to meet you, listeners. Oh, lovely stuff. And finally, Cameron. Ah, uh, Cameron. I knew him. <laughs> kind of course I know him. He's me. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, oh we, we, always, we always have a, a minus one point to this particular person uh thing that happens at the beginning of every of every show and but actually i really like that oh. <laughs> uh, oh, oh lovely uh so yes talk of the devil a a news show where i'm going to play some uh news related games with uh my lovely contestants um Except for the first game, which is going to be a game of good advice, bad advice, terrible advice. Where, uh, in this game, I'm going to read out some problems to my contestants, and uh, uh, one of them is going to give good advice, one of them is going to give bad advice, and the other is going to give terrible advice. So, uh, for this first problem, uh, I'm going to ask Fred to be giving good advice, Tristan to be giving bad advice, and Cameron to be giving terrible advice. Uh, Groovy. Awesome. So, my first question is, I want to be popular. I've moved to a new school and I want to be popular. But right now, I'm just this invisible kid, this invisible nerd. What should I do? All right, Fred, take it away. Um, so, uh... If we're, you know, we've got to be real about this. The illusion of wanting to be popular and everything, it's just one grand facade, really. It, there's nothing to really worry about. Like, no matter where you go in life, you will find people that will be happy to talk to you. Um, you will find people that will be your friends. If you haven't found anyone as of yet, it may be fair to say that it's not necessarily, you know, your fault. It wouldn't be your fault anyway. It may just be that you haven't found the right people. So I'd say keep looking. Uh, don't change yourself to any significant extent because then you're founding uh, relationships off of, you know, lying to yourself, really, which surely can't be a good thing so i just say keep looking don't get too disheartened um find things that you're comfortable shared interests and the friends will come oh, oh very hot oh lovely stuff <laughs> <laughs> and uh tristan what's your bad advice you should not listen to what that last guy said. In you? fact, very, very, very important to be popular that's about the most important <laughs> thing you can have in life um, so you can't on that. And whilst it would be very easy to say, well, I'm probably never going to be popular, that's actually defeatism. What to do is replace every element of your a facade that will slowly crack and destroy your inner self over time. Change your hair, your clothes, your look, change what you're interested in. <laughs> Pretend to be someone more interesting than who you actually are. 
and see how it goes. That's my advice. Hopefully it will work. Oh, wonderful. Uh, and finally... <laughs> <laughs> oh, and and uh, yeah, finally, so, Cameron, what's your yeah terrible advice? Go, go ahead. So you'll find in life that sometimes two environments are so similar that all take strategy that works in one environment and apply it to the new environment. For example, school is much like a prison. So in order to <laughs> become popular, you do prison rules. You find the biggest, meanest, toughest person in and just. Beat the heck out of them. Maybe it's a teacher, maybe it's a headmaster, and I'll in- earn you the instant respect of your fellow peers, and you'll all and you'll be known as the most popular kid in school. Make a shank, you know. Oh. Shiv, shiv, that's it. You shank him with a shiv, and you shiv him with a shank. <laughs> oh. oh, wonderful! Oh, lovely stuff. Okie dokie. Uh, and on that bombshell, uh, on to on to the next question. Um. Okay, uh, this for this one, Cameron, you will be on good advice um, after after giving that excellent advice, uh, and um, uh, Fred, you will be on bad advice, and Tristan, you will be on terrible advice, and uh, <laughs> the yes, and the the question is, oh, everywhere I go, there's never any free parking. Are there any tips on how to avoid having to pay for a parking ticket? All right, Cameron, take it away. Now, you d- I understand why you don't like um, paying for a parking ticket. However, it is the law. It is important that you follow the law. Um, if you are traveling somewhere that is not too far from your home, you could uh, walk or cycle. Um, if you are traveling somewhere where you have to drive and there's no, there's no other choice, uh, you can drive for yourself. You could uh, park in a, uh, a street and then walk um, to your de- to, to your destination park where no, there's free free car parking. Sometimes you do get um, free car parking if you know someone who is um, has a disability. For example, you can get free parking, and yeah, you can do that. Oh. Lovely stuff. Uh, and... I'm myself slipping into bad advice then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and and uh, Fred, uh, follow off from that that brief adventure into bad advice. Or, or well, no, <laughs> make up your own bad advice. I mean, but yes, go ahead. So, uh, clear. Uh, we're looking at sort of ventures into being more frugal I mean there were some elements in that good advice that were you know uh, I think uh, worthwhile um, the the idea of uh, walking to places close to you instead just walk to all places uh, if you're going on a day trip to Edinburgh and you live in Devon just schedule out a week to walk there um uh, of course, we're being frugal, so you will need to just scrounge uh, forest areas for food. You don't want to go into an inn or anything to pay for it. Uh, take a little uh, sort of stick with a bag tied on the end of uh, you know essential belongings with you. Uh, don't want to carry too much. And uh, when you get there, you'll find you need to park a door, and your legs will probably be massive by the time you're done as well. So it's double benefit, really. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Yes, indeed. Uh, and finally, Tristan, what's your terrible advice? That advice sounded very... Now, oh, I'm a lawyer and I will tell you the law. <laughs> um, it, it's only illegal to park somewhere without paying if there's a sign up saying that you can't park there without paying. Now, you might be thinking, aha, I will take my axe and knock down the sign. But no, they, they get cross if you do that. However, if they haven't put up a sign in the first place, you, you're from the law if you park there. And I'll tell you where there are hardly ever any signs saying that you can't park. That's right, inside people's houses. <laughs> so <laughs> park your car inside the nearest house or building. Just drive it in through the front 
and that's perfectly legal and you will be untouchable by the authorities guaranteed or your money back <laughs> oh wonderful uh and and finally uh on to the last of uh those uh um uh, problems uh my my problem is i've started a fire in my kitchen what shall i do um and tristan you now have to make the rather big jump from terrible advice to good advice um cameron you're on bad advice and fred okay. you're, you're on terrible so yes uh Tristan, take it away. So, I'm hoping that this fire is quite small at this stage. If it is, you need to, hopefully, you've got a fire extinguisher or a fire blanket. You must use this immediately. Put the fire blanket over the fire, squirt it with the fire extinguisher as per the instructions, which I'm sure you will have reviewed before. Now, if it's a larger fire, you may find that you want to exit the house and call the fire brigade on 999. And hopefully that will sort things out. Of course, um, if it is a smaller fire and it was by a gas stove or something like that, you might want to turn that off after you put the fire out. It's important to have these things to hand. And if you don't, you're just going to have to... Wonderful. Oh, sorry, my, my internet cut out a little bit uh, at the end there, but uh, very good, very good advice. Uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, on to the bad advice then. Uh, Cameron, take it away. Okay, so your house is on fire. You know what? That is pre central heating. And you also can use fire to cook. You can, you know, cook some marshmallows. Uh, so, you know, uh, what you need to do is you cancel your um, gas, electricity, and, and central heating um, bills. So, because now you have a free source of energy that, you know, you can use forever. And you're saving money. That is, that is a steal. <laughs> oh, wonderful stuff. Uh, awesome. And then finally, on to Fred. What is your terrible advice? Ultimately, the house is doomed. Um, there is nothing to be done. There is no way to fix it. The fire has started. It will claim the house and you if you're not careful. So, um, don't bother calling the fire brigade. Uh, they are just part and parcel of the government, therefore also corrupt. They will just make the fire worse. Don't call them. Um, why do you think they're high brigade? Because they <laughs> they just create fire. Um, so, uh, I like the idea of using this opportunity. You're in the kitchen, grill grill a bit uh, before it gets too warm. Uh, leave leave the house. Um, take your insurance details with you to claim you know this extortionate benefit. Um, uh, Play Billy Joel's We Didn't Start the Fire to prove your innocence. <laughs> um, just, yeah, yeah f fight the power, man. The, the, these corrupt people cannot call you guilty. They will not cause more fire. Uh, you've got a nice grilled sausage in the process and tons of money. It's uh, Fire is useful. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, cavemen must have discovered it for a reason. Oh, jolly good. Uh, okay. Well, that's the that's the end of the good advice, bad advice, terrible advice round. Uh, so we're now onto our song break. Um, but before the song break, I've got the creative answers round for you guys. So, um, my my creative question for you guys is, uh, how did this fire in the kitchen start? What might have caused it? Um, so yes, that is the question that you guys, uh, must come up with an answer for by the end of this song break. Um, but, uh, the, the song breaks are all part of the song game, so there's going to be three songs played throughout this episode, and they're all going to point towards a, uh, story that's been in the news recently. Um, either pointing towards it in the lyrics, or in the title, 
or in the name of the artist. And the first song I'm going to play to you guys is What You Get Is What You See by Tina Turner. And I'm going to play it now. So, mm. Yes. Uh, so here it comes. And talk to you guys after the song break. See you soon. Lovely stuff. Lovely stuff. Oh. Oh. Howdy. Oh. Howdy. Hello. Howdy. <laughs> oh, lovely. Uh, Okie dokie. Uh, so that was uh, What You Get Is What You See by Tina Turner. Um, and now it's time for the creative answers round. Um, so at the, before the song break, I asked you guys, how did that fire, uh, the aforementioned fire, how did it start? Uh, and uh, I'm now just gonna uh, randomize my list of you guys. Uh, right, lovely stuff. Uh, okay, okay. First up, uh, Cameron. How did the fire start? Ah, uh, well, it's important to note that uh, you know we didn't start the fire. It was always burning since it was beginning. <laughs> I had to get in there for anyone else. Um, so the fire started when. You have heat, you have fuel, and you have something else. Uh, I didn't do what well, well, in science. <laughs> um, no, nah, it's um, it started because it started because uh, in your kitchen you have uh, a gas oven, and also a gas oven requires gas, and uh, it said inflammable on the gas counters, which someone thought, oh, it means they couldn't catch fire, so they, they decided to smoke a whole lot of um, legal substances next to it, <laughs> and that caused an explosion, and then the fire spread, and it started. <laughs> oh, oh, very good. Oh, lovely stuff. Uh, <laughs> wonderful. And the uh, second answer uh, comes from Fred. How did you, uh, well, how did the start of the fire start? Well, this is, uh, this is the direct result of, uh, sort of a scientific experiment that was made to answer one of the age old questions. Because, uh, we've all heard the phrase, too many cooks spoils the broth. Mm. Very good. Thank you for fulfilling the blank. Um, <laughs> And, you know, uh, these people in this kitchen, they, they came together and uh, they wanted to see, like, you know, how, like, what happens to the broth? How does it get spoiled? There are really too many cooks. And they did they did not anticipate how disastrous the bro the uh, the uh, broth gets spoiled. I not only does it get spoiled, but apparently it sets the whole flipping kitchen alight. Um, you have over a set number of cooks in the kitchen just you don't even need to touch anything fire just starts <laughs> uh so the scientific experiment was a success but ultimately disastrous consequences yeah uh, what is what is the critical point what is the critical number of cooks after which the fire will begin um I think uh, it may have been sort of uh, around like eight ish. I think they got they got six and they started to see sparks. Um, <laughs> and then a seventh cook entered, and uh, the, you know they started having to open the windows and like you know just started to having to, like take like items of clothing off because it was getting too warm. And then an eighth cook came in, and his face just got melted <laughs> off as he walked through the door. He is not alive, um, but he, he he died for science. So if anything, it's honourable. <laughs> oh, oh, lovely stuff. Oh. No, no wonder Bake Off got moved off the BBC. <laughs> too many deaths. Too many deaths. <laughs> oh. Oh, wonderful. And uh, finally, uh, Tristan, 
how did the fire start? There I was, commencing <laughs> filming on the fifth instalment of my popular YouTube series of reenacts of James Bond films starring action figures. We had reached the film You Only Live Twice, the popular 1967 entry into the James Bond franchise written by Roald Dahl and starring Sean Connery. Those among you who are aficionados of the James Bond series may be aware that the denouement of this film takes place in a secret base in a volcano. Now, I have to admit... I may not have fully thought through how I was going to create the volcano. I thought that my strategy of using a, a cake tin, a hole at the bottom, and placing it over the fire on the, on the hob would be an extremely reasonable uh, thing to do, to place my Sean Connery James Bond and my Blofeld action figures in there. They were going to have a very exciting stop motion wrestling match. I realize this is slightly, um, slightly different to the plot of the film, but you can't get the funding these days. Um, but instead of having a wrestling match, they both burned to death along with everything else in my home. And uh, long story short, I'm afraid uh, the whole series is going to be postponed until <laughs> further notice. Oh, that's heartbreaking. <laughs> oh, wonderful stuff. <laughs> I'm, 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 I, I, I can't wait for for the next installment in in this in this saga. Uh, but uh, the the point I, I'm gonna have to give the point to Tristan there uh, because I I very mm -hmm. much like that. Um, so well done, Tristan. Uh, and that brings us to uh, our true or false round. Um, uh, and so uh, for this round uh, for this game, so I will be reading out. Uh, two news headlines and a bit of a bit of news with them, uh, a bit of, a bit of the article uh, that comes with them, and uh, you guys will guess on whether the the story is true or false. Um, so the first story is, uh, the headline is, man loses two hundred times at crane game, and calls police to investigate before staff member loses three hundred times. As well. A Japanese man at a Sega arcade took several goes on a crane game where the player controls a dangling claw to attempt to grab hold of a prize. After what he said was 200 tries, he called the police to the arcade, whereupon a staff member took their own turn at the game and failed after what was reportedly 300 tries. This continued until the st <laughs> <laughs> this continued until the staff member rearranged the toys at the bottom and was finally able to catch one. The police decided to take no action at the time. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. Jeez. <laughs> wow. It's definitely false. <laughs> That was a roller coaster. That was. <laughs> it was really, really good, but I don't believe it. Sorry, John. <laughs> why? Why not? Out of interest. I well, a few reasons. I think. I think. Although I, I, I think that they wouldn't call it the crane game. That's my theory. I think they would have used claw straight out. And also the way you said at the bottom made me think. You wrote that line because you said it so naturally, you know? It felt like such a John line, so that's why I think you wrote it. Oh, now, now, at this point, I should say, I, e even with the the stories in the true or false round that are true, I, I write my own uh, articles uh and oh. so sometimes some yes yes sometimes the when the article is false i obviously just make it all up but when the article is true i will just read read the story and then write what happens uh to so as to basically avoid being caught out by the clever clogsies <laughs> like you <laughs> who, 
who 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 you know always always pick up on writing styles uh so so uh that, that I, I mean you you know uh you wrote <laughs> pardon i was right that you wrote the line <laughs> so actually my analysis is sound mm, 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 very true very true oh yes so uh i'm still saying it's false fair dues Fred and Cameron, what do you guys think? Mm. Um, I mean, how much does two hundred attempts at a at a crane or claw game cost? You know, mm. like, I know not. I don't know what the conversion rate is, but. Uh, Two hundred and ten. That's that. That seems ridiculous. I like. How, how long does that take? I does this man have a job, a family? Uh, has has his wife seen him this weekend? <laughs> I. Um. Uh, I'm gonna say it's false. Fair dues. Cameron, what do you think? Uh, I'm also saying false because like not only did some like someone try 200 times, their police tried 300 times, and it, even though it's um, and you said it was in Japan, right? Mm, yes. Where the yen like conversion to like the pound or the dollar is like ridiculous. Um, I'm saying. Yeah, I'm saying it's false. Fair dues, fair dues. So we've got everyone is going with false. Uh, am I am I correct? No one's changing. Yes. All right, cool beans. Well, I regret to tell you guys the story is true. Oh, oh. No. <laughs> I. Oh. <laughs> I'm I'm sending it. I'm sending it to the uh, to the um the chat. Uh, but but yes. The the it is a one hundred percent true story, I believe, um, and and uh, there you go. But um, oh no, <laughs> poor man. I... Jesus. <laughs> oh. oh yes. All right, all right. Uh, <laughs> on to the next story though. Um, so uh, next headline. Uh. I'll read out the headline and the article, which I may have written, I may have made up, but I did write, but it may be totally made up. <coughs> um, but yes, uh, right, next headline. Halloween fire, uh, Halloween fire decoration is so realistic, people keep calling 911. And here's the article. <laughs> A California home is now the hottest thing in Halloween decorating. <laughs> Carmen and Travis Long. <laughs> Carmen and Travis Long created the impression of a fire in their house by hanging sheets over the windows and shining orange light through them to create the impression of a room opaque with fiery smoke, resulting in several people calling 911. The firefighters who arrived on the scene, however, were so impressed that they reportedly high-fived Mr. Long and told him, oh. Great job! <laughs> what do you guys think? True or false? <laughs> that, I, I'm, the high-five? Really? I... That's... One of the most ridiculous things I've ever heard. I, I uh, especially in COVID times. Surely an elbow. Bump. Yeah. <laughs> um. Oh, that has to be false. I'm sorry. That or does it have to be true? What could it be? Maybe he will never make up something so ridiculous. I. <sighs> I don't know, I, and this double bluff of making it a more performative reading. That's I... true, that's true. <laughs> it's always like, is this, is this a John character, police officer, or is it John bringing life to a real-life character? 
I, he's too good. I, um, yeah, no, I'm sticking with false. I'm I'm braving it, sticking with false. Fair dudes. What Tristan Cameron? What do you guys think? Cameron, what are you thinking? <laughs> I don't know. It's really hard. Um, see, I do remember seeing like something similar. But the Halloween decoration wasn't of a fire, it was of something else. Oh, so maybe John saw something related and came up with a clever spin on it. You clever bastards all. Oh, not, not so. I'm, I'm, saying, I'm, saying, I'm saying false. I'm saying false as well. Interesting, interesting. Fair dues. Well, guys... I'm, I, I, I'm, I regret to tell you again that's, <laughs> that the story is true. <laughs> oh, you hear it? It's in the chat now. <laughs> it's... That's, I, I. So the story, the story, the story I saw was about a guy who had a giant mechanical spider on his house. Oh wow! Uh. Oh jeez! I've got to Google that. Oh, lovely. And what happened? Uh, so like people thought it was a real spider, like because people people are dumb. <laughs> and um, yeah, he just kept. He's, I think it's still up there. I don't, I don't can't see why he would have to take it down. Mm. Gosh. Oh wow. Oh, but yes. Oh. right. So, uh, that was the true or false round. Um, where, where I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I'm because I've, I've, uh, I've duped you all. Uh, uh, yeah, hundred uh, percent. <laughs> I crikey. Uh, uh, so, so yes. Um, that was true or false, and it's it's now uh time for our song break. Um, so uh, but but before the song break, we've got the creative answers round. And my creative question to you guys is, how are you guys decorating your houses, um, uh, slash, uh, flats, uh, slash, uh, whatever building you want? You can pretend you live in a house, uh, if you want to decorate it, if you, if you want to do that. So for the, the sake of your answer, uh, how are you decorating your houses for Halloween this year? So, uh, yes, that's my question to you guys. And now for the song break, uh, the song tying in with the song game uh the song uh, name is throw away your television and the artist name is the red hot chili peppers so here it comes now uh and see you guys after the break <laughs> Jubbly. Oh, okie dokie. Uh, that was uh, Throw Away Your Television by the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Um, uh, so before we get into the creative answers round, I thought I'd ask you guys, has it has anyone got any idea of what the, the news story I'm pointing to might be? What? First song? Um, the first song that you played? Oh, uh, uh, it was uh, What You See Is What... Uh, what You Get Is What You See by Tina Turner. Okay, so wait, how many guesses do we get? We only got one guess, or? Um, uh, you, no, you got as many guesses as you want, just the first person to get it right. Okay, is it like a new TV that you don't have to watch? <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm afraid not. It, TV, for the, I mean, it's TV for the blind is just audio description, so I don't really know. I have no idea. Yeah, myself. I don't know. I have no idea either. Interesting. Right. Well, okay. We'll uh, we'll get back to we'll get back to it after the the third song break. Then, uh, cool beans. Uh, right. So, um, now for the 
uh, the, the the last round of this of this show. Uh, mind the gap. Uh, in this in this round, I will be. Um, oh no! Oh no! Wait! Creative answers. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, lovely stuff. Uh, right. So my creative question to you guys was: How are you guys decorating your houses for Halloween this year? And the first person up uh, on creative answers, Tristan. What's your answer? Well, my initial thought was, what is the most terrifying thing that you could possibly encounter when you're walking down the street in the dark, in the night time, around Halloween? And of course, it would be pretty scary if you saw a giant spider or a monster or something like that. But you know what would be scarier? Well, for me, it would be scarier if I saw myself coming towards me. So I thought... First off, I thought, I know, I'll decorate my house with lots of pictures of my own face. That'll scare me. But then I thought, no, 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 no. They don't know who I am. They don't know they should be afraid of me. What they are probably afraid of encountering when they're on the dark street is themselves. That'll be pretty scary for anyone, seeing yourself rub out. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to decorate my house by putting up a lot of mirrors. So there's going to be mirrors all over it. In fact, the house itself will be practically invisible. You'll just see yourself, or maybe lots of yourselves, coming towards you. And the closer you get, the more they're coming towards you. And then you run away before you realise it's a mirror, because, of course, it's that scary. Oh, oh lovely stuff. Okie dokie. Uh, so we've we've got uh, Tristan uh, sort of taking advantage of people's uh, self fear, self self hatred. Uh, that's a very very good idea. Uh, and uh, next up, Cameron, how would you decorate your house? Well, I think it's taken an opportunity to show the scariest part of Halloween and also things that are genuinely scary. So you walk into the house, you are first greeted by a bank manager. Ooh. Walk into the living room, and it's teenagers on bicycles. Oh. You go into the kitchen, and oh no, it's a charity worker. Ah. Where should I get my day? Ooh. And you go upstairs, and you see the scary, like, the part of Halloween that's scary. Bad costumes. Nothing but Jokers and Harley Quinns. Oh. <laughs> and then and you go to the bathroom. You think you're safe. But then, all of a sudden, a landlord! <laughs> oh. <laughs> I will require several actors for this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, wonderful stuff. Oh. Uh, okay, okay, and and finally, uh, Fred, can can you top um a, a charity worker and a landlord uh for 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 scariness? Uh, take it away. Well, here's the thing, John. Uh, I'm gonna be completely honest with you, and I'm gonna wear this on my sleeve. I was planning to anyway. I can't top either of these. I'm not planning to top either of them because you see, as a child of God, um. I viewed Halloween as, you know, just proudly Satanist, really. Um, so what I decorate the house with is just multiple pages of the Bible until it looks like the house is itself the house that God built. Thank you. <laughs> oh. Oh well, very good. Um, I'm going to I, I I'm going to have to give the point um to uh Cameron's uh landlord uh and other other terrifying things uh answer uh so well, I, very... feel, I feel like the woos did it for me. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was a good call. That was really funny. Oh yes. Uh, so jolly good uh so we're, we're currently uh uh on tristan and cameron tied with one point each 
Uh, and Woohoo! Wait, what? <laughs> Because, <laughs> because none of you, none of you got the, the true or false thing right. Uh, all, all... Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so yes, uh, this is this is so far uh, a rather uh, point-free talk of the devil. I was about to say a pointless talk of the devil, but no, po it's not pointless. <laughs> it's it's uh it's it's about you know finding the the champion of the week. So uh, it's uh, that's not pointless. A, a, a assertion of dominance is not pointless at all. Um, uh, so now we move on to our last game of the show, and that game is Mind the Gap. So uh, I'm going to read out um, a headline to you guys uh, with a blank or several blanks in it, um, and uh, you guys are going to guess what's in what's in the blank. And the first person to get uh, the word in each blank right, um, we'll, we'll go one one blank at a time. First person to get the word right will gain a point. So, uh, my first headline is has, just has one blank in it. Here it comes. 11-year-old charged after allegedly stealing blank and engaging in a police chase. I'll, I'll read it out again. 11-year-old charged after allegedly stealing blank and engaging in a police chase. What do you guys think? Sausages! <laughs> no. <laughs> Apples! Uh, bananas. Mobility scooter. <laughs> okay, Cameron's closest with mobility scooter because it's... Moped, car. that's that. <laughs> scooter in general. Bicycle! So, uh, plane. Uh, uh, Helicopter! <laughs> No, no. Skateboard. We're 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 closer with we're closer with skateboard. Um. Uh. Actually, Roller skate. Hoverboard. Uh, no. Ice skate. Uh. No. No. It's, uh. It's 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 a thing with wheels. Um. And it is motorized actually. So it's so skateboard isn't really closer. Uh, mobility. Motorized skateboard. <laughs> um... Motorized scooter. <laughs> Yeah. But um, Fred's got it. Fred's got it. Well done. Uh, I didn't expect. Uh, you. Well done. Uh, no. But no. I, no. What? Yeah. That's nothing like skateboard. That was closer to car. Uh, sorry. Sorry. Yeah. I, I. I. did. I did a very bad job of uh, of of hit nudging you guys towards <laughs> it. But I mean. <laughs> John, to be honest, we were all talking at the same time. I don't blame yeah, we you. Were. I... <laughs> it's a free for all. We're all on three. We're all on one point now. Oh yes. Oh, it addresses the balance. Oh, well, yes. Oh no. <laughs> Eleven-year-old charged after allegedly stealing a bus, a school bus, in fact and engaging in a police chase. An 11-year-old boy in Louisiana is facing multiple charges after allegedly stealing a school bus and taking it for a joyride. Several police cars took chase. The chase lasted about half an hour before the bus crashed into a gas line and a tree, both at once, I, I imagine, uh, in a woman's front yard, causing severe damage to the bus, but thankfully not the schoolboy. One passerby who witnessed the chase took a video of it and tweeted the video with the caption, A kid stole a bus today, lol. Uh... What? <laughs> I, I respect that, but it is, of course, illegal. Is <laughs> that a bit? <laughs> uh, 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 I get what you mean. I mean, I just... I'm, I'm 19, right? Um, I have never had a single driving lesson in my life. This kid is 11, and you're kind of saying that at least for a while, he was like with some level of expertise <laughs> commandeering a school bus, which is, I presume, harder to drive than a car, mm. and then also maintaining that during a police chase at 11. Mm. Yeah, bloody hell. Uh, I would like to know w why they did that, but yeah, I mean, it's pretty impressive. <laughs> I mean, uh, they, they did it for a joyride, apparently, just uh, just just for the fun of uh, it. I'll, 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 okay. I'll, I'll send, the, uh, I'll send the, the link to the news story uh, in the chat. Here it is. Uh, but yeah, 
It's uh, it's mad. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. Oh. Yes. <sighs> he he's got a lot of charges. That's a. Uh... <laughs> but uh, yeah. Oh wow, there's video of it as well. Oh, I didn't realize this. Oh, there's there's a link saying video of the incident, and uh, I, I'm thinking of we're, we're we're just to all our listeners, we're taking a time out right now just to just to watch the school bus video. Uh, Who doesn't oh. want to see a kid <laughs> going on a mad one? <laughs> oh yes. Oh well. <laughs> With the lovely caption, a kid stole a bus in Baton Rouge today. Lol. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, yes. So, uh, that's that. Um, uh, the points are now equal, as Fred got a point for that. Um, uh, and now we move. <laughs> we now move on to our last game. Uh and the last headline, uh, not the last game, sorry, the last headline, uh, and there's a, a blank in it. Here it comes. Massachusetts coastal town orders locals to stop calling 911 about giant blank. I'll read it again for you guys. Massachusetts coastal town orders locals to stop calling 911 about giant blank. Blank. What do you guys think? Seagull. <laughs> Close. Uh, Cloud. Uh, no. <laughs> Se seagull was closer. Pigeon. Uh, no, not quite. Uh, jellyfish. Uh, wait, what was that, Cameron? Jellyfish. Oh, uh, no, no, but that even fish. closer. Just fish, yes. Well done. Oh, that that was that was a short one, but uh, but uh, well done. Didn't even say anything. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be quick, boys. You gotta be quick. <laughs> oh. oh yes. Uh, so yeah, yeah. Massachusetts coastal town orders locals to stop calling nine one one about giant fish. Several residents, several residents, several residents. <laughs> very, very quiet. I'm having rabbits. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, several residents, oh, that was a voice crack. Several residents of Wareham, a town in southern Massachusetts, have called the police over their concerns about a sunfish, uh, with some of the residents afraid that it's a shark. After warrant personnel from the town's authorities were, were dispatched to, t to take a look, the town's Department of Natural Resources tweeted, This sunfish is doing normal sunfish activities. It's swimming, and the, the sunfish is fine. And then in capital letters, Please stop calling the police department about this sunfish. <laughs> Double exclamation marks. <laughs> oh. But yeah, I'll send a link. To you guys it's a it's a very happy looking sunfish but uh but yes Aww. I know I know oh, oh yeah that guy that, that that guy's chilling yeah he's he's vibing yeah, he's just having a good time. Mm. <laughs> but 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 apparently that's enough to call nine one one for. Mm. Crazy. Mm. Just just let my guy sunfish live. Come on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hashtag free. Hashtag free the sunfish. Hashtag uh, no jail. Hashtag time. leave sunfish alone, please. Oh. My son, fish. <laughs> My son, fish. <laughs> oh man. Oh yes. Well, that that gives another point to Cameron, having got. Yeah. The... <laughs> so now Cameron is on two points. Fred is on one, and Tristan is on one as well. 
Uh, so yes. Ah. <laughs> uh, so that brings us to our uh final round. The uh, well, our final song break. Um, but also the creative answers round. Um, and so my last creative question to you guys is, uh, what illegal activities were people concerned that the sunfish might be up to? Uh, so yeah, what, 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 what were people worried about? What, when people saw this, this sunfish, they, they thought to themselves, what, 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 what is this guy doing? What kind of drug dealing is this guy doing? So yeah, what, what illegal, <laughs> what illegal activity are people concerned that he might be up to? Uh, so that's your question. And the, the song, uh, that I'm going to play to you guys, uh, as, as many of you might know, I am a huge metal fan. And, and this song is, uh, tying into our song, our, our song game. The title is Electric Funeral. And the artist is Black Sabbath. Uh, so yes, <clears throat> uh, just imagine me frantically headbanging. Uh, uh, <laughs> um, but yes, uh, radio is a visual medium. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, uh, yeah. Talk to you guys after the song break. This is Electric Funeral by Black Sabbath. Here it comes. <laughs> stuff oh right uh yeah so uh that was uh electric funeral by black sabbath um and uh so before uh we uh get to get to what the story all of these songs have been pointing towards is uh it's the creative answers round um so uh before the song break i asked you guys what illegal activities are, are people concerned that the sunfish might be up to and uh, in this time, the order it's going to go in is Fred, Tristan, and Cameron. Um, so, uh, Fred, take it away. Um, I, th I think it's fairly obvious what the uh, what the fish has done. Um, I don't even know why we're wasting our time talking about it. Uh, it's a uh, uh, fishing scam. <laughs> God. Um. <laughs> Uh, the it, this is in the U.S. Uh, U.S. elections are coming up. Uh, trying to get all that juicy, juicy data. Um, I uh, I even know what party it represents. The uh, the uh, sunfish. It represents uh, uh, Sunald Trump fish. Yes, <laughs> Sunald Trump. Yes, um, and. Uh, He's uh he he's trying to get all the information to uh figure out who the uh the uh, Biden voters will be in this state, um and uh or this this town uh and then uh the sunfish with all of its in like you know ingenious cyber know how is um just going to barrage it with uh with a uh, trash email because if there's one thing that a, a modern fish knows equivalent to fishing it's how to deal with a lot of plastic so oh, uh, <laughs> it's, it's a two-fold process yeah oh gosh biden his time but oh god <laughs> <laughs> oh oh lovely stuff and uh all right, uh, Tristan, uh, what's your answer? You're quite right that this fish has been involved in a phishing scam, but I think you are wrong about the kind of phishing scam we're talking about here. Look at the size of it. How many fish do you think it's eaten? A lot of fish. Let me tell you about this sunfish. This sunfish <laughs> is a fugitive from Europe. It has broken 
the EU common fisheries policy, oh. not just broken it, <laughs> swallowed it whole. This fish is the sole reason there hasn't been a Brexit deal yet. <laughs> it has overrun all of the quotas of the entirety of Europe, Britain, the entire part of the world that's concerned about fishing, that always argues about fishing. And whilst they were arguing about the minutiae of fishing quotas, this fish, this fish was chomping and glomping and chewing Glump. and swallowing Glump. all the fish in that part of the ocean. <laughs> and now, now they have to start again on the common fisheries policy because there are lots less fish than there were to begin with. And that's why this fish has gone to America because it can't stay in the EU anymore for two reasons. It's on the run from the law, and of course, it needs more fish, and there aren't any left in Europe, so it's trying its luck elsewhere. Oh, no. Oh. It crossed the pond. <laughs> well, that's not even a pun, but still. <laughs> that doesn't even really make, make sense to the joke, but still. <laughs> oh. oh, God, very good. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, lovely stuff. Well done. And uh, finally, Cameron, uh, what's your answer? Well, clearly they were very concerned about this fish because the police department had new, so many calls. I think this coastal town believes in reincarnation and that this isn't just an all sun fish. It is the new form of Albert Fish, a famous serial killer in New York. And now he's come to... <laughs> Um, the, that coastal town, and is worried that he's gonna start killing all the other fish. And... I'm trying to stop this monster. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, so they're they're justified then. They, yeah, they, yeah, but the bloody props to them. Oh, oh, wonderful stuff. Uh, <laughs> oh, very good. Uh, okay. Uh. I'm gonna. I'm. I've. I've got a choice between uh, uh, this fish is launching fishing attacks uh, to to influence the election or, or to ju well to just get get data on the election. Um, I've got this fish is a a, a murderous cannibal, um, <laughs> and uh, I've got I've got Cameron's one that uh, the, the 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 residents are actually very very justified. Um, in thinking that fish, this fish is a re reincarnation of a murderer. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm, ooh, oh, it's hard. Uh, I'm going to have to go with, um, Tristan's one. I think that's, that's my favourite. Oh, uh, hooray! Oh, yeah, oh. Mwah, blew, blew a kiss at you, uh. But, oh. ra but radio is a visual me. No, there's there's no conflict of interest here. Uh, uh, mm. I, uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> but I don't like these numbers. <laughs> uh, uh, well, well, uh, that brings us to the last part of the show, though. Uh, uh, and now Tristan and Cameron are tied on two points with Fred on one point. So will it be a, a three-way tie, or will it be, uh, or will either Tristan or Cameron pull ahead? Uh, so, come on, guys, this is this this is our radio show. Come on. <laughs> well, you know the answer, then, Fred. Wait, do I? <laughs> that was a snappy retort. Uh. So, the songs I've played you guys are. Uh, let me get the first one. Uh, what you get is what you see by Tina Turner. Um, throw away your television by the Red Hot Chili Peppers, and uh, Electric Funeral by Black Sabbath. Uh, so, has anyone got any ideas, or shall I start giving clues? I, I mean. It kind of, I don't know any story relating to it, but it kind of, is it to do with like the airing for corona reasons of a funeral on television? Or is that incredibly dystopian? Is... <laughs> it's not. Uh, uh, I, is it to no. do with all the cinemas that are closing? 
Uh, no, no. Uh, I might... Is it to do with they had a t they had a funeral for TV? <laughs> um, no, no, it's not. Uh, um, it's I'll, I'll start giving you uh clues. Um, it's to do with a big event that happened this week, a big company event. Big company event. Uh, a a big big old a, the biggest company ever in fact is it oh um is it some is it something to do with the new iphone it is oh did they release the new <laughs> iphone mini uh no no it's it's is it that they don't it doesn't come with a charger now or something like that? Yep, or... Fred's got it. Yep. Oh, <laughs> no. Now a show! <laughs> <laughs> Why doesn't it come with a charger? That's just weird. Well, the... the they sport... want to charge you for it, I guess. <laughs> the They'll dog. probably say that it's for the environment, but that's a clever lie. Mm, well, exactly. Exactly. That's what, what it is, is the new iPhone, it no longer comes with the the wall plug the, the the little box um that you put the that you plug the cable into because you know you've got the charging cable the lead which has a um a, which has a usb at both sides and then you've got the little box uh, that goes into the wall i don't know if you guys know but mm, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah that's how it works um so yeah. they've got rid of that wall plug the little box um uh saying that it's to cut down on e-waste uh electronic waste but um the an old iphone wall plug won't fit the new cable that the new iphone comes with so oh. <laughs> so customers have to buy well will probably have to buy a new box a new wall plug anyway um and if they buy it from apple the cost is 20 dollars <laughs> wow and of course, they they have to have their charger that's different from any other device. Yeah. It's not a conventional charger; it's a special Apple charger. Um, next time, next time I need a phone, I get Android. Yeah, yeah. Jo join the dark side. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm not advocating any particular company. I'm just anti everything. You are you anarchy. Yeah. anarchy. Tristan yeah. supports anarchy. You heard it here first. <laughs> Uh, but, but, yeah, we're, but, we're pretty perfectly balanced. We've got Fred, who's obviously like the lawful good. Then we've got Tristan, who's chaotic evil. <laughs> <laughs> what, what are you I'm neutral, dude. You're pure neutral, okay. Yeah. <laughs> True neutral, all right. Uh, uh, Tristan supports both an anarchy with uh, the hatred of companies and communism with the equal distribution of, of points. Uh, that's right. <laughs> we ditched we the points of Tolkien Devil. <laughs> oh, oh no! Uh, I'm I'm afraid I can't. It, it is it is the I think probably the first talk of the Devil episode where nobody wins. Nobody. Yeah. <laughs> we, are, we, are, we are the Lenin, Stalin, and Trotsky of Tolkien Devil. <laughs> oh yeah, we're having a great time. <laughs> Nothing can ever go wrong in our empire. He said. <laughs> empire. Empire! You sound like a Bolshevik. <laughs> Me a Bolshevik? Never. <laughs> Never. I hope you're not going to stab me in the back here, Joseph. Death, death stab to you. the Lucy Czar. The Czar of Lucy. I'm, I'm not a uh, guys. Come on. <laughs> oh, it's you. Cool. It, 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 you can't spell Lucy without you, as in all of us. So, <laughs> campaign slogan. <laughs> There's no I in Lucy. Oh wait, there is, but never there mind. There is. <laughs> There's no I in Lucy except at the end. So individuality <laughs> comes last. There you go. Hmm. L Lucy hmm. stands for love of Fred Bloy. You. Comedy and then I at the end. And then I at the end, yeah. <laughs> oh. oh, lovely stuff. Well, uh, 
okay, yeah. So that that wraps up the episode. Nobody wins. We, uh, you uh, could you could say that we all win if we all everybody wins don't, don't, apart yeah. from John. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 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 Uh, I won for for duping you all with my true with my uh, true or false story writing. Uh, yeah, we've been like none of us got it. <laughs> that is true. Uh, they were true. They were true. But you, you.